wonder what that could be. It can't be. In today's video, we're going to be trying out an AMD Radeon GPU in 2024 to evaluate its current reputation. AMD GPUs often face flick flack for their driver performance compared to NVIDIA. But today, we're going to see if this is really true, as we're going to go over the driver installation, the software features and gaming performance. Then at the end, we'll do a side by side comparison of AMD Radeon GPUs with some NVIDIA and Intel options. Let's get into it. Now the GPU of choice, the 7600 XT, maybe isn't the best choice for a GPU as options like the RX 6750 XT are gonna provide a lot better performance per dollar. But the reason why I chose it is because it's the only card that I have and it should provide a pretty good insight into AMD's current GPU performance due to its elevated VRAM. All you pretty much need to know about the 7600 XT is that it performs just like a 7600, but of course with 16 gigabytes of VRAM instead of eight. Let's jump into the GPU installation process to see what that's like on AMD GPUs. The GPU that I'm currently running of course is an RTX 4070, and we're gonna swap that out with our new 7600 XT. Let's go ahead and download DDU, extract that real quick. Extract it again. Now we're gonna go ahead and go into safe mode for extra precaution. So change, advanced, startup options. Hit restart now. And we're gonna hit troubleshoot and startup settings. Now, as you can see, we're on this page, the startup settings, and we just wanna go ahead and click safe mode. So just like that, we are in safe mode. And go ahead and go into DDU, open that up, and I'll uh, get rid of this NVIDIA garbage. So we wanna click clean and shut down. And just like that, our NVIDIA garbage is now being abolished from my computer. Now we can of course go ahead and remove our graphics card. So we'll take off the side panel, take out our single eight pin connector, remove the screws. Actually, just before that, let's remove the HDMI and display port. Yeah, don't forget to do that, like me. Now we can remove the screws. And now we can take out this piece of shit. There's our dinky little 4070 with a single A pin connector. And get rid of this garbage. And just before we install the 7600 XT, we might as well talk about the PC itself. So it's got a Ryzen 7 7800X3D and 32GB, 2x16GB of 6000 megatransfers RAM. And that's pretty much all you need to know about this PC. Here's our 7600 XT. Oh shit, there's two 8 pin connectors. Fuck. So hold on one second, I'm gonna have to get another 8 pin connector. There's our secondary 8 pin connector. We can slip that through the back. Slide that through. And there's another 8 pin connector to use. Now let's install our beautiful 7600 XT. Replace our screws. Install our dual 8 pin connectors. It's a bit messy, but that's fine. Nothing to worry about there. And there's our GPU successfully installed. Now all we have to do is replace the side panels, install our cables, and of course, turn it on. And there we are. Now the first thing that you would usually do when installing a new graphics card is, well, installing the drivers. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's go to AMD Auto Detect and Install Download Tool. And we'll go ahead and download that for convenience. Let's open that up, hit yes. Install. And as you can see, it's detected our 7600 XT. Now I have had Adrenaline software installed on this before because my 7800 X3D comes with an iGPU. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is do a factory reset. I also disable keep user settings so we can just keep everything like a fresh user experience here. And we hit don't allow AMD to collect information, which is what I do. And we wanna hit next. We don't wanna install privacy view because it's not really a feature that I'm interested in so let's hit skip we can also hit install on all of this and just like that our installation is complete and it only took about a couple of minutes to install so it's not that bad of a driver installation we can uncheck this and let's go ahead and restart our computer and see what the amd adrenaline software experience is like in 2024 so now we're back on the desktop and let's go ahead and take a look at the amd adrenaline software and you'll actually be surprised about how many features 
there are in this piece of software. So right click on the desktop reveals AMD Software Adrenaline Edition. Let's take a look. So here we go. Welcome to the new AMD Software Adrenaline Edition experience. Your favorite features all in one place. Play, capture, share, live stream, tune and browse. All of this and so much more. Let's go ahead and skip this and this takes us to our home screen which is actually my favorite part of this entire software like low key. As you can see you've, you've got everything front and center. You've got your performance mode here. You've got your driver software update thing here and also you've got your recent games. So this will actually show you all the recent games you've been playing as well as applications as well and give you like a readout for the average FPS or performance and whatnot. Down here you've also got media and capture so this is like a quick panel to the record and stream tab up here and you've got a big banner here which is fine. You've also got AMD assistant so this will help you with different features that are part of AMD adrenaline software and that's about it for the home screen. Up here you've got all your tabs, you've got a search bar which is nice to navigate through the literally metric shit ton of fucking features you get. You've got your notifications, you've got settings and whatnot. So let's take a look at the gaming section. So as you can see this lists all your applications including productivity applications and I can click on one of those and adjust the per game basis settings which we'll touch on a bit later. And then within the graphics tab is where the interesting stuff comes in. So right here is where you can access what's called HyperRX. So if we enable that, you can see that we're now using AMD Radeon Super Resolution, as well as it enabled things like fluid motion frames, anti-lag, and also Radeon Boost all in one go. So fluid motion frames is one of the new features that is basically AMD's answer to something like frame generation on the video. But instead of being sort of an in-game add-on that developers add to their game, it's a driver-based frame generation. And of course, Super Resolution, Anti-Lag Boost, which were all pretty self-explanatory at this point. Super resolution upscaling to your native resolution. You've got anti-lag which reduces latency and of course boost which helps with some of that movement. Hitting the display tab you can of course adjust all the display settings like free sync. You can enable virtual super resolution. So this basically gives you more resolutions way beyond the resolution of your monitor and of course a bunch of different scaling options here as well. There's also performance advisors which tells you like what changes you need to make to your settings to get more FPS. And going into to the record and stream tab you can see this is your one-stop shop for anything to do with recording in AMD Adrenaline software. We're not going to go too in depth into all this but basically you can set up which preference you want to do either recording or live streaming, set all your microphone quality and whatnot and you can record right into AMD's Adrenaline software and in addition to that live stream. So similar features to what Nvidia has but it's built into their main software. You can of course go into settings and change some of your settings in terms of encoding such as resolution and FPS and stuff like that. Going on over into the performance tab is where you can start adjusting metrics such as like overclocking your GPU and memory as well as even the CPU. Of course you've got metrics and there's also an overlay which you can enable which we might as well enable now because we are going to be using it. We'll enable game detection as well because we don't need to be looking at that 24-7. From here you can see your FPS, your CPU metrics and also your GPU metrics which is pretty self-explanatory and going on over into the tuning tab they'll give you a little you know and and use a license agreement as well as a warning don't need to worry about that this is where you can adjust things like your cpu overclock your gpu overclock including memory and you can also set an auto overclock for both your cpu and gpu and of course do a custom tune on both of them if you want to specifically on the gpu side it will also allow you to automatically undervolt the gpu which is really nice as well as overclock and overclock your VRAM. Now Nvidia does have something similar when it comes to the auto overclock features but it doesn't have anything to do with the undervolt features. You can also do a quick stress test which is really nice and going on over into the settings it's just additional settings here. You can also enable smart access memory which is already enabled and going over to the smart technology tab is where you can enable the various AMD features including smart access video and smart access memory again. So overall the AMD Adrenaline software is pretty goddamn impressive. Like in my opinion it's even better than the new Nvidia app which just came out like a couple of months ago. It's really nice that the home screen just includes everything you'll ever need like the different profiles and your driver update. If there's anything I've missed in this software 
which I probably have because there's so much in this. Let me know down in the comment section below. Now why don't we check out some gaming performance on AMD Radeon and also check out the things like fluid motion frames and the plethora of different Radeon features. Let's get to that. Okay, we've now hopped into Cyberpunk 2077. After just playing around with a bunch of settings and OBS settings, I ended up projecting OBS onto the other screen so I can get this godforsaken bloody overlay to work. Now we're gonna start things off without fluid motion frames and then we'll enable it a bit later. And we're at 1440p and we're gonna start things off with ray tracing at medium. So just a little bit of ray tracing with the 7600 XT to see how it performs and maybe we'll drop the settings a bit and enable fluid motion frames. So right off the bat we're getting around 40 FPS. So the medium preset for ray tracing is not like the highest FPS experience here, but the game looks absolutely fantastic and yeah, what else is there to say? Obviously you aren't going to be turning on fluid motion frames here. AMD says you really want to be targeting 60 FPS at least, at the very least, but we'll drop the settings and see how that goes. Our power consumption is sitting around 180, so it'll be interesting to see how much that drops when we go ahead and disable ray tracing completely here and just use one of the rasterization presets. So we got around 43 FPS, not a bad overall experience, and we got minimums around 37 FPS, so it didn't stutter like a huge amount. But let's go ahead and enable uh, the high preset here, which is gonna set F start to quality this time. And we're also gonna go ahead and enable fluid motion frames here as well. So now that the fluid motion frames is enabled, you can already see that it's working as magic here. On the left, we have 226, and on the right, which is currently still the only way you can see the extra FPS with fluid motion frames, the AMD overlay it says it's like 450. So we're on the high preset now, let's see how this performs. And god damn, you can see that our normal, so called normal FPS on the left side is around 68. This is because obviously the game can't capture those extra frames. And on the right with our overlay you can see that's 140 and the game feels absolutely smooth as hell. Like low key this is a night and day difference. And our frame times as well are buttery smooth here. We got like 6 milliseconds between each frame so it's really goddamn smooth. It looks amazing. Amazing at all. There's not really any artifacting or anything going on as well, which I kind of expected, but there's none of that here. And there we go. Obviously, this isn't the FPS that we got. If I had have recorded the FPS, which I didn't do here, you would have seen our average FPS, but it got around 140 FPS with full motion frames. So that's about it for Cyberpunk. Why don't we hop into another game like Apex Legends and see how a more competitive, more open world online experience would perform on AMD Radeon. So I've headed into a game of Apex Legends now and our settings, we've just set it all on low because this is more of a competitive title. Again, we're 1440p and there's no V-Sync. This game seems to have a FPS limit of 300, even though I set an FPS limit beyond 300 in Steam. We're getting around 300, it seems to have no trouble reaching that. And the game feels super smooth. Now we aren't using fluid motion frames or anything, it's just anti lag and boost. It feels real smooth, like no stutters whatsoever, frame times are beautiful, everything's great. Why don't we try upping the settings a little bit? Maybe we'll go to max out the settings here. Wouldn't really recommend that because this is a competitive title. Let's apply that. And even despite that, we're still getting 180 FPS. 1% lows of 150, so not bad at all. Even at the highest settings here. Shit, fucking hell. Yeah, as you can see, I clearly do not know how to play this game. And I definitely did not just start playing, but at least our performance is good. Anyway, enough of this game, why don't we go play so Forza Horizon 5 and see how that runs at Radian. So now we've hopped into Forza Horizon 5, a game that I'm more accustomed to, you know. We're gonna 1440p and we're gonna try FSR, set the quality, and we'll set our graphical preset to Ultra. We're also gonna start things off without fluid motion frames and then we'll enable it a bit later to see how and one thing that you'll immediately notice is that that's really goddamn smooth. We're getting about 120 FPS, about 110 on the 99th percentiles, even without fluid motion frames. So just imagine how much you would be getting with fluid motion frames. 
And don't forget we're at the ultra settings at 1440p, so even on a 7600XT, the Radeon experience is pretty damn impressive. Our frame times are looking absolutely pristine, and that's really about it. Why don't we turn on fluid motion frames now? Let's hit enable on that. So now enabling fluid motion frames, you can see that it's not a double FPS experience or anything, but it's still, still a respectable increase. Our 1% lows are sitting around 100, and our frame times haven't been impacted or anything, so it's still a smooth experience, although it's not really something that I'll be able to tell the difference with as before we were getting pretty high FPS. So that's the Radeon experience in 2024 and I gotta say Radeon is severely underrated. In all the games that we tested today, even though we only tested like three games, the 7600 XT all but performed excellently. There was no instances of any lagging whatsoever and it performed very adequately, like above expectation. Whether it's competitive titles, intensive titles like Cyberpunk 2077, Radeon performs absolutely beautifully. Of course, by all means the 7600 XT is not the best choice for a Radeon GPU. Like I said, the aforementioned 6750 XT is going to provide much better value when gaming. We can even show up some charts on screen to show some other options that are a lot better value for Radeon. Like as you can see, the 7600 XT, despite having double the VRAM, performs toe to toe with the 7600 and the 7700 XT provides adequate performance, coming closer to something like the 4070 as well. And the 7800 XT is an absolute chad here, handily outperforming the 4070. And these GPUs are going to be a bit less pricier than some of the NVIDIA options, which is again that value we're talking about there. Now of course in ray tracing, the same really can't be said. The 4070 handily outperforms the 7800 XT, and the same can be said with the 4060 Ti and 4060 outpacing some of the other options from Radeon. But really it's not that far off, and let's be honest, you aren't really going to be ray tracing that often with these graphics cards. Above all, like in ray tracing, Radeon still performs pretty well. And there's also those aforementioned features like fluid motion frames you get that boost the performance of Radeon into the stratosphere pretty much. Like as you can see with AFMF, it brings it closer to some of these NVIDIA options with DLSS frame generation and even beats it in some cases, like the 77 XT. And in games like Forza Horizon 5 turning this feature on, it absolutely hammers down on the video's frame generation. Anyway, enough of those graphs. The whole point of this video was to showcase how Radeon is actually not that bad as people put out to be. They've got a really nice feature set which is on par or even better than some of the features you get with NVIDIA, like fluid motion frames. So overall it just cannot be understated. Radeon is actually pretty good in 2024. It's drivers are usable, I literally had no crashes whatsoever installing the drivers or playing any of the games. The AMD Adrenaline software honestly surprised me with this plethora of features. I honestly don't understand why people still go for Nvidia mostly these days. Like AMD just has such a good set of GPUs, especially on the mid-range and low end, that you could opt for instead. Like come on guys. And with like MSI leaving the GPU market as well on AMD side, it's really just sad to see that AMD GPUs aren't getting the support that they need. Anyways guys, that's all for today. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also comment down below if you want to see another video where we try Intel Arc in 2024 and do a video similar to this. Stay tuned.